initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Risk of Rain 2. I'll go ahead and bend over for all of you and let you know right now. I didn't play the first Risk of Rain. In fact, I'm really not even a fan of the genre. But Risk of Rain 2 is an absolute fucking banger. I played it on a whim during a stream after we had just finished up the Fast and Furious game, which is an experience unlike anything else this world has to offer. And Risk of Rain 2 had me glued to it for an extra six or so hours. And I've played significantly more since then, I think I'm right around 24 hours of playtime so far, and that's just when, within like the last six or so days. The game is just extremely fun. So to break the game down, Risk of Rain 2 is a roguelike where you play as one of many different characters, each with their own set of abilities that give them an entirely unique playstyle. Really no character plays the same as another one, and I really love that, and I actually like every single character I have so far. I haven't unlocked all of them, but I've unlocked a good chunk. The only one I haven't enjoyed very much is the Commando. It's just a really basic class. There's nothing wrong with it. It plays just fine, just like all the others, but it's just not as much fun as some of the greater ones, like my fucking boy Multi or Loader. Loader is probably some of the most fun you can have in this game. Absolutely love Loader. Loader is like an in-your-face, right-up-in-your-nutsack kind of melee frame where you can like launch yourself across the map. You have like a bionic commando grapple. You can play this game like fucking Attack on Titan with Loader where you just grapple to someone with your extendo fister and then spin around them attacking them the whole time. It's just really... There's so many different ways of approaching fights in this game with the different characters that it's just always a joy. And the best part about the game is, of course, it's loot. That's its core mechanic. You kill a bunch of enemies on a bunch of different stages. You get money for it. You spend that money on the chests that randomly spawn on the map. And you get randomly generated loot. Some of it's incredible, and some of it's just like a stack of condoms it gives you that's pretty worthless. But those worthless items aren't entirely useless because you can have a bunch of those, and you can trade them in for something better if you can find it on a different stage. There's also 3D printers where it prints the item that you see there. If it's an item you want, you can trade more some of your useless stuff for it to get something better for a build you're going for. There's just plenty of options when it comes to building your character during a run, getting him up to a godlike power spike. And that's incredible because a lot of games shy away from making you too strong for fear that you'll get bored of it. The only other game I can think that allows you to go this hard and being overpowered is Warframe. And this, I love that. I love the fact that this game isn't pissing its pants and biting its nails in fear that the player's going to get bored being too powerful so they have to limit how many items you can stack. This game doesn't give a fuck about that. All your items can stack until you're ready to take on God himself if you want to. You can make yourself so powerful you're one-shotting every single boss, even on Monsoon difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty. It's, it's great. I love that it encourages you to go for these God runs and be overpowered. There's never a point where you're just, like, you know, firing wet noodles at an enemy. As long as you're collecting items and being mindful of the build that you want to put on, you can, you can always be hitting these meaty slaps on everything, and it's always so satisfying. Every character has so many cool fucking abilities to use and to take care of enemies. It's just an absolute joy. I also really like the progression in this game where you unlock units by performing some specific very challenging tasks. So when you do get the unit you actually feel like you got a big reward and you earned it. I like that it's just not freely given to you. You have to actually work for it. And like I said earlier, you can get up to this godlike status of power, but the game's not easy. This game is by no means some kind of pushover where you'll come in here like half overdosed on Xanax and still pull off an easy god run. This is an extremely challenging game. Things can go wrong in a fucking instant. If you take your eyes off of the computer screen during a monsoon run, like maybe your dog took a shit in the corner and you look to check what that smell is, you're probably gonna die in that brief moment that you weren't watching the game. This game can get hectic, chaotic, extremely fast. And I love that. It's extremely challenging, very rewarding. The final boss in particular I think was great. The final boss, he will spread those cheeks and then come in for seconds for dessert. I found the whole last stage great, culminating in a wonderful boss fight, complemented by some amazing music. Risk of Rain 2 has an incredible soundtrack. It absolutely slaps. Uh, I want to mention that because the soundtrack in here, it really caught me by surprise as well. It was really fucking good. Sound design was fantastic. Now keep in mind, when I say final boss, I don't mean like you beat this boss and you beat the game, you're never coming back to it. It's not exactly like a narrative story heavy game. It does have a lot of lore to it if you care about it, but that's more of just like a secondary thing to just kind of pay attention to. You don't have to be like 
you know, digesting all of this information and exposition if you don't want to. It's you reading things about the lore and about the items that you get a story. So when I say final boss, I just mean the last stage in a run. You will absolutely be going back through and playing again. Just because you beat the final boss doesn't really mean shit, because there's still plenty of things that you can still do and accomplish. Overall, I really have no complaints at all about this game, at least nothing that I can actually put as a complaint on the game itself. Just the nature of the genre where things are randomized. Sometimes you just get absolute garbage for loot, or sometimes you can't even find any chests and all you're getting is little gunner drones that you can buy, which isn't as good as just getting an item. So sometimes you just get absolutely fucked in the ass on loot. Which isn't the game's fault, that's just the nature of the genre, so there's really nothing to hold against the game there, but that's like the only time I'd get frustrated with Risk of Rain 2, is when it was just out of my control and just down to bad RNG. Plugging Risk of Rain 2 into the moist meter, I'm giving this bad boy a 95%. I have absolutely no complaints about this game, and this was one of the biggest surprises I've had in gaming in a long time. I didn't even expect to like the game, I thought I was only going to play it on stream for like an hour or two just because so many people recommended it, but I've fallen in love with it. I think Risk of Rain 2 is an incredible experience, it has a multiplayer, which is, it's good, it's fun with friends, but it is competing for loot, which is kind of frustrating for some people, so I could totally see why a lot of people might be a little out apprehensive about multiplayer and sharing that loot like that but overall there's just so many things to do in the game so much replayability so much versatility when it comes to builds with the with the different units i just absolutely love the risk of rain too fantastic game and uh yeah that's about it so yeah